Greetings Darklings, tis I, Toasted Heretic, and welcome back to my channel. Here we are now in the uh, number two in our series of uh, five bands that Americans think are goth that we here in the UK disagree with. We don't think they're goth. I'm wondering who's right here, so let's have a look, shall we? And number two in our series, we have the Cocteau Twins. Now, I kind of get why this gets confused. We will go over the details. First of all, let's do the goth score, shall we? So, um, five, five things make up the goth score, all marked out of ten. Let's go for it. We are going to go for the black factor or general goth look. And surprisingly, there is quite a goth look to the Cocteau Twins, especially in their early days. And here's the issue with the Cocteau Twins. The later you get the further from any form of goth you get with them. But I'm going to give them five, because it definitely was for a good few albums, a good few years. Not even necessarily singer Elizabeth Fraser, but Robin Guthrie, Simon Raymond definitely had a gothness at the hair. I don't know if they wore iron or anything, but they definitely had that look. So I'm going to give them five for the black factor. I'm also going to give them five for Guyliner because they definitely did have a bit of that going on, and even as the phrase did early on. Um, Doom Tune. I'm going to do five, but I'm going to come back to that when I when explain why as we go. Death Disco. I have never heard the Cocteau Twins at a goth club or any club, and that's not that surprising as it's reasonably ambient music. However, I'd love to dance to Peppermint, Peppermint Pig sometimes, so... DJ sorts it out, okay? Well, that's a banging tune, and there certainly are um, other tunes which you could dance to, especially early on, um, as I say, in their, their kind of career. And um, But I've never heard them. I'm going to give them zero. Life After Death, their influence on goth scene or goth culture. I'm going to give them five. I think they definitely have had some influence on goth, but they've had a huge influence on the dream pop backslash shoegaze scene. They are right up there as one of the main, especially Shoegaze Dream Pop, they kind of almost started that. They they are like Jewel Division, a huge influence on Goth. Contact Twins are t t the same to Dream Pop and Shoegaze. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about our oh, Goth band. That gives them a total of 20 out of 50, which isn't bad, but it's not that great either, is it? So point wise, I'm not going to give it to them, but I get why a lot of people think. And that's because early on, um, well, actually for the first thing, four albums, the Cotto Twins were on a record label in the UK, an independent record label called 4AD. Now, if you're in the States, you've never heard of 4AD, you're thinking, so what? Look who else was on the label when they were on the label, and you'll go, get why I'm going to bring up 4AD. Uh, Bauhaus, The Birthday Party, Dead Can Dance, Clan of Zymox. Goth, all of them. Modern English, I would say goth. Some would disagree, but I would definitely say goth. I think most people would. Um, and then there's the sleeves. 4AD used the same guy under the name 23 Envelope to design the sleeves, and everyone had a goth sleeve. It was it was lace and and buildings in the dark and all. I'm the great. And they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. People used to collect them, collect prints of them, have them framed on the wall. And uh, I wonder what happened to all those, because they were beautiful sleeves, absolutely stunning um, bits of artwork. And it was part of that sort of the feel of the record label. Um, but they probably didn't, by the way, they had really horrid sleeves, but never mind. Um, but uh, most of the bands on 4AD went for that. Now, when the Cocteau Twins first appeared, they were from Scotland. And people in the album called Garlands. If the Cocteau Twins had recorded Garlands on 4AD and then split up, goth without a doubt Garlands is a goth record and if you've never heard it check it out especially grail overfloweth i've got some called grail overfloweth for christ's sake uh garlands wax and wayne fabulous songs that whole album's really good it's got minimalist drum beat it's got a really harsh gothy guitar 
Um, and that droning melodic bass. I mean, and Elizabeth Fraser's. She really developed into that full, kind of beautiful. Her voice is just stunning, isn't it? But it hadn't really developed into that full thing yet. But it was still a real shrill presence on that album. I mean, it's a great record. It takes a bit of listening to, warn you. It's not, it's not full of pop bangers. It's very atmospheric, it's very dense, but it's great. If you give it you know, four or five listens, you'll fall in love with it. It's a really good record. And the couple of EPs I did after that, I think there was one called Lullabies, which is really borderline off, and so is Peppermint Pig. But by the time you get around to the next album, Head Over Heels, they've already really marched off into post-punk, almost ambient territory. And uh, it's very easy to tar them with that because that's where they went. I mean, that album's still very, very kind of got that dark guitar sound on it, but it's moved into another sphere. There's bits of jazz in there. The lead single, Sugar Hiccup, was seen as a beautiful dream pop tune when it came out. It's called Sugar Hiccup, again, for God's sake. It didn't tell you a lot. Um, the next album, Treasure, was a move for even further. I love Head of Hills and Treasure. Maybe like, the first three Cocteau Twins albums, I think, are absolutely brilliant. They're very different in feel. By the time you get to um, Treasure, where all the songs are just old English names, I, I'll be honest with you, my son is named after one of the songs on Treasure. That That is genuinely true. That's what I think of, of that album. So, I mean, it's a great record. Um, I went to see them around that time when Treasure was out, and they were playing an opera house in um, Covent Garden. Exactly. Post punk band playing an opera house. I would turn around and talk to my friend, and some people behind me said, Shh, we're trying to listen. That's where they've all gone very quickly at that point. And from there on, I think the Cotto twins marched off into, I think, quite an ambient major, they signed to a major record label, they started doing well in the States, but at that point, that is dream pop. That is dream pop, borderline ambient shoegaze, and nothing to do with goth, in my opinion. Um, I don't say those records are bad, I kind of lost interest with them after Treasure, they went a little bit too mainstream for me, personally. Um, but I'm going to bring up something else here, which always brings us back to goth, which is the 4AD thing was, 4AD was run by a guy called Ivo Watts Russell. Um, very, very influential in underground music, especially the goth scene, um, around that time. And he formed a kind of supergroup musical project that he produced the records for himself on 4AD called This Mortal Coil. Um, and the first two This Mortal Coil albums, It'll End in Tears and Blood, I've got the Cocteau Twins work. They were part of that sort of super group that made made up those two albums. There's a track on It'll End in Tears called Sun Siren, which is probably the most famous song that they did. And as much as it's under the name This Mortal Core, but it's Robin Guthrie and Elizabeth Fraser from the Cocteau Twins who are playing and singing on it. And it's amazing. Now, I'm aware that's going to be quite obscure to people. It's on, it's on Spotify, etc. If you've never heard this Mortal Coil, check out those first two albums. They are treat ears. There's a slight datedness to them, I agree, because they're from the very early 80s. But they're still stunning and beautiful. And it is, can we call it ambient goth? It's definitely... There is definitely got there. Dead Can Dance are part of it. They're all over it. So are um, the guys of Modern English and Clan of Zymox. All over those records. If you like any of those bands, you're going to absolutely love this small call. If you've already heard them, you'll know what I mean. Like, this small call, by the way, carries on. They did several other albums, but with other bands that are on there. So they featured more like Throw Muses and people out of the Pixies and people like that, Pale Saints. And those bands later on, which if they aren't goth, and therefore those albums have less of a goth quality. But do check out this little coil, but I'm still sticking with non-goth for the Cocteau Twins. I'm sorry about upset anyone. If you disagree, be polite, but do leave comments. Um, do, just leave a comment. Just let me know why. Don't just say, no, you're wrong. Tell me why. Tell me exactly where I've gone wrong. I'll, if you know what, I'll, I'll change it if you can convince me otherwise. So let me know. Um, 
And this is part of a, a series, there's five of them. This is um, number two, so it's the fourth one, because that's the way I decided to do it for some reason. Uh, number one, by far the most controversial, uh, and we've already had one that was really controversial. Oh my God, this is going to, Save One Ranging will be coming very soon. These are gonna be in a playlist, you can watch them all, enjoy them. Um, but to have access to that, obviously please subscribe, it's free, and like the video if you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, beautiful people, ta for now. Mwah.